How's it going all? It's Than, and today I want to tell you why in every system I set up these days I install a calcium reactor. Maintaining calcium and alkalinity in a reef aquarium is kind of a big deal, especially when stony corals are concerned. Even with no stony corals present, tons of critters ranging from calcareous algae to crustaceans to mollusks rely on a consistent supply of both for growth and optimal health. Okay, so what is a calcium reactor? In short, it's a device that maintains calcium and alkalinity by dissolving calcium carbonate media and slowly dosing it back into the reef tank. Calcium carbonate media just doesn't break down on its own. In normal tank conditions, calcium carbonate is a rock like you see here. In order to dissolve it into calcium ions and bicarbonate ions, the water has to become more acidic. The pH of natural salt water hovers at about 8.3 to 8.5 in that range. For a calcium reactor to function, the pH running through the media has to be closer to 6.8 to 7.2. To achieve a slightly acidic environment, we bubble carbon dioxide into the reaction chamber containing the media. When carbon dioxide mixes into water, carbonic acid is formed, and thus you get a lower pH over time. Each reactor has a bubble counter so you can see in a glance how much carbon dioxide is being introduced. Most reefers shoot for roughly one bubble per second. The water in the calcium reactor circulates over and over dissolving the media through a main recirculating pump like this pan world. Now in case you were wondering, this is a Geo 818 reactor and it's my current favorite. The only thing that I wish I did was pay for the upgraded pump to an Iwaki. Panworld pumps are really nice, don't get me wrong, but in my opinion, nothing compares to an Iwaki. To get water into the reactor, most aquarists use a small power head. The smallest ones will work fine because we're asking for a slow flow of tank water in and out of the reactor. The feed line should be clearly labeled. To get the benefit of the calcium reactor, we have to reintroduce the water that is now full of calcium and bicarbonate ions back into the tank. This is done through the effluent line. The effluent line basically drains out the solution in a controlled fashion from the reactor to the tank. While it's technically possible to control the flow of water going in and coming out, from the feed pump, most people control the flow with a valve on the effluent line. The valve that's currently installed is a needle valve. A slightly better option is a pinch valve like this. The difference is the pinch valve does not have water running through it like the needle valve, so it never gets a buildup of calcium that can interfere with the amount of water flow. Now if the needle valve isn't cleaned regularly and it gets clogged, the reactor will keep going and basically turn the media inside into a milkshake and you do not want to have that happen. So what we have talked about so far is more or less the core of what a calcium reactor is. Pretty much every calcium reactor has those fundamentals covered. Now I want to talk a bit about some of the elements of this particular reactor that I like. First off, reactors need to be maintained, but not very often like a protein skimmer or something that needs to be cleaned all the time. Once every six months is fine, but when maintenance has to be done on a reactor, it's a bit more involved, and I appreciate designs that can be drained easily and come apart completely. Second, remember that part about how a reactor has to maintain a pH inside the reaction chamber of about 7? Well, how do you know that it's working? The best way is to have some sort of pH monitoring probe that you can just look at. The Geo reactor has a pH probe port for this very reason. Now if you already have a reactor and it doesn't have a pH port, don't worry. All you have to do is drip the effluent into a cup and test the pH of the water in the cup. Here, you can see the aqua controller giving the pH reading of 8.85, and that's not so good. The problem here is the CO2 tank ran out of gas and there's basically no reaction going on inside the unit. Yep, nothing coming through the bubble counter, so we just need a refill. This is what it should be displaying when working properly. It's important to note that a pH probe can alert you to the opposite problem as well. If I see the pH is down around 6, I can pretty much be sure that it's a milkshake inside the reactor. 
I need to check and see if the effluent line is blocked or that there's too many bubbles being fed into the unit. Lastly, this system can be taken one step further and you can have the pH monitored through a web connection. This particular controller has an iPhone app that reports data on all five of my systems, so if I'm away from the greenhouse, I can check up on things. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful in figuring out what's the deal with calcium reactors. I love them personally. They keep my water parameters rock solid, and although they may seem a bit intimidating at first, they're actually rather simple devices. If you like these sorts of videos, by all means hit that subscribe button. If you would like to know a bit more about these reactors or purchase a geo, you can go directly to our site by clicking on this annotation here. Alright, bye guys.